ball, beautifully bowled. Hi everyone, RH6 the Cricket Tragic here. This is a channel for all cricket tragics who eat, sleep, talk and walk cricket all the time. Now, how do you know you're a cricket tragic? Well, one indicator that I use to gauge, and it is also mentioned in Steve Waugh's book, is that if you're driving past an oval and you notice a game going on, it could be under 12s, it could be just a game of park cricket, and the bowler's running into bowl and you slow down, you slow down to see what happens with that particular delivery, you have been then bitten by the cricket bug forever, and the game has seduced you. So I thought, what's the best way I could launch this particular channel? And I think it's going to be a throwback to a bat that most of us cricket tragics have dreamt about, especially those of us who grew up in the 1980s. And it is none other than the Simons Super Tusker Rhino Charge. So I'll be talking about this bat today. And over the coming weeks, I'll be posting content in relation to cricket. It could be anything about cricket. So stay tuned. We'll be doing a lot of cricket bat reviews, gear reviews, uh, cricket books, and anything related to cricket. So this bat, for those of us who grew up in the 1980s, this has been an iconic bat. Used by the likes of Gordon Greenwich, Ravi Shastri, Steve Waugh, Mark Waugh at the beginning of his career, Mark Taylor, and a host of other cricketers. Harry Solomons, the owner of Kingsgrove Sports, recently launch relaunch this bat if you will it's a reissue of the original bat and it has captured the imagination of cricket tragics here in australia and probably right around the globe so let's do a quick rundown of the bat um, the thing i really like about this particular bat is that what harry's done is he's kept this rhino charge true to its original uh, self so in essence, it is exactly the same shape, probably a bit bigger than the original one, but it maintains the original ethos of the original bat, if you will. So if you actually have a look, it has that hump, the iconic Super Tusker hump, and nothing about that's changed. The only thing that perhaps has changed is it's a bit bigger. The edges are a bit bigger, just to confirm with the requirements of the modern day cricketer. I've done a couple of measurements on the specs, but we'll get into that. But let's first and foremost have a good look at the bat. So if you have a look, it's got the retro stickers uh, coming from the original uh, Simon's Super Tusker line of bats. Uh, the rhino's in black, although with the rhino charge, it used to be red. So there's been a bit of a recalibration or rejig, if you will, of the stickers because the original rhino charge sticker was actually red throughout on this particular side. So this one's got the black one and the very retro Simons and Tusker stickers. The sticker on the actual face of the bat remains the same. However, it's got a modern twist. So it's, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, it's got the embossing. So it's got a bit of texture down there, which is really, really nice. The bat actually came with a white grip, which I don't think really went with this particular bat because if you remember, you know, mid 80s, late 80s, uh, most of the players who played with the Super Tusker or the Rhino Charge actually used either blue, black, red or green grips and white grips weren't around back then. So I actually changed that to a blue grip. In terms of the bat itself, let's start with the handle. The thing I really like about this bat is uh, it does have a bit of a semi-oval handle which uh, I personally prefer it. I really like it. Uh, this is the top of the range one. So this is the Rhino Charge. It's This particular bat has 10 grains with a tinge of hardwood. I'm a left-hander, so that's my inside edge, which I actually prefer because with my dodgy technique, I quite often crack the toes and the inside edge of the bat. So a bit of hardwood just makes it a bit stronger. It's got 10 equidistant grains. There's a bit of a blemish there, but that obviously doesn't affect performance. If we have a look at the shape of the bat, it's got a very pronounced bow to it. So that's really nice. Uh, that just gives you that little subcontinental touch to it. I haven't knocked or oiled the bat yet. Kingsgrove does provide a service of knocking bats in. Uh, and they do a fantastic job, but I'm just old school and I like doing all of that myself. I think 
being a uh, being a cricket tragic i actually enjoy the entire process of knocking and oiling in a bat myself so I'll, I'll be doing that myself if you have a look at the profile it's very very full so it does have that traditional hump uh, at the bottom the toe is pretty big pretty chunky toe uh, i did a quick measurement and it's about 25 mils the edges aren't the biggest if we compare them to modern bats it isn't the biggest but this bat is not really about edges i let's, let's grab a caliper do a quick measurement i don't like these calipers because they're not designed for left-handers i struggle a bit with them they should design calipers for left-handers okay now i've got to turn it around yeah it's about 30 mil edge so it's not the biggest uh the spine height's fairly decent did a measurement the last time that doesn't look right Yeah, just about 60 mils on the spine height. So not the biggest bat. But as I said, this isn't about really about the size of the bat. People who buy this particular bat will be buying it predominantly for emotional reasons. It's for a lot of us, it's a trip down memory lane. And that's essentially why we were so excited about the launch of this particular bat. If you've actually been keeping track, you would have noted there's a lot of conversation on Instagram and Facebook about this bat, especially on King's Grove's page, and they actually sold out in two minutes. Uh, it was launched 6 p.m. Uh, I forgot the exact date, early in October, and I actually went online from 5.55. By the time I checked out, it was 2 past 6, and all the Rhino Charge bats were sold out. Two minutes. So that just tells you about the excitement surrounding this particular bat. Uh, forgot to mention this, but if you have a look at the Rhino sticker, uh, there's a bit of texturing there as well, which is really nice. There's a lot of attention to detail. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are little, there's a bit of texturing there as well. And there's a little Rhino logo and Simon's written down, pretty hard to spot on the camera. Uh, the same thing applies to this blue section and the red section. So overall, a fantastic bat. Uh, good value for money. Uh, what I will do later on is we're just going to take it outside. I've got a Puma V batting net in the backyard. We're going to have a hit. Uh, a lot of cricket bat reviews, we just basically tap the mallet. I personally struggle to really make sense out of that. I don't really, uh, as a viewer, I'm not able to get a good understanding of the performance of the bat through that particular test. I prefer bouncing a ball. Uh, to have an understanding of the ping of this bat. If we actually put it through the gauge, as I said, the dimensions aren't the biggest, so it's pretty easily, there's a lot of gap down there, pretty easily going to go through the gauge. But I, as I've mentioned a number of times, it is not really about the size of this bat. Uh, this bat represents uh, one of the most iconic bats ever used in cricket. It was something that, you know, as I said, people growing up in the 80s, uh, we used to dream about this particular bat. I personally did. And by the early to mid 90s, this brand for some reason had just disappeared off the face of the earth. So it's been a long wait for a lot of us cricket tragics for this particular bat. And a big shout out to Harry Solomons and Kings Grove Sports for this reissue of this iconic bat. Do a quick mallet test. And then we're going to step outside and hit a few balls and see how it goes. Togo is all right, I mean, but that's not really the business area. The business area is where we have that meat and the response on that is pretty darn good. It's a bit, it's a bit dead up here, but that's not the business area. The sweet spot sounds really, really good. It does not seem like it's an overly hard pressed bat. Uh, it's not too soft either. I think it's the pressing is just about right and it should not take a lot of time to open up. Uh, let's go step outside, hit a few balls and see what it actually sounds like. So everyone, here we are at my backyard uh, doing a ping test on this particular bat. 
The thing which I forgot to mention earlier on is the weight of the bat. So on the scale it weighs exactly 2 pounds 10.3 ounces. In terms of the pickup, it feels a lot, lot lighter. It does not feel, because I've got other bats of that weight which feel heavier. This actually feels beautiful in the hands. Probably feels two eight, two eight and a half. And I think the scoop down at the toe actually helps with the pickup. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bounce a ball. It's a semi-new ball that's been used a bit, but it's still in good shape. It's a CA Test Star ball. We'll bounce that and after that I'll have I'll hit a few balls in this Puma V batting net and give you my overall assessment of the Simon Super Tusker Rhino Charge. So here's the ball. Bouncing it at the toe. Not bad. Gradually moving up. This is where the business end is and the sound is sweet. As I said earlier on, it's not a very hard press bat. It should not take a lot of time to open up. And the ping on it, and I have not knocked or oiled the bat yet, is absolutely sensational. There is no vibration whatsoever that you feel on the bat. And I hope you can hear the sound because the sound is just sweet. It's the sound of music to my ears. I cannot wait to play with this bat. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Let's have a hit in the nets, and then we're gonna wrap this up with my final thoughts on the Super Tusca Rhino Charge. All right, so here we are in the Puma V batting net. Gonna hit a few balls just to give you a feel for what the bat actually sounds like a bit more. as you can see pinging off quite well as I said I'm just gonna knock it in uh, oil it put a tape and it should be good to go uh, if you're interested as you may have noticed I'm wearing the matching Simon's uh, Super Dusker batting gloves as well if you want to watch a video review of this please leave a comment and I will see if I can make a video on it so please stay tuned on the channel for more cricket reviews if you like the content, please like the video, subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. This channel, R86 The Cricket Tragic, is a place where we will be talking about all things cricket. Until next time, signing off.